um, and, and, and being a black man myself, I can tell you that this concept of you're either too black or not black enough, depending on what group you're in, is real in the police department as well. So there's a lot of things out there, but there does tend to be this whole situation of tribalism, and tribalism infects police departments, fire departments, schools, whatever. It seems to be the way that we're clustering ourselves mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. So I get it. I, I want to see police get more training in this area, but I also want people to understand that it's not an easy job to do. And I also want to see things change so that we're not having multiple incidents of black men being shot by white cops yeah. across the country. I don't know how to do that, but there are some people who shouldn't be cops in the first place, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. That's obvious. And there's a lot of people who are cops that are getting tarred by the people who shouldn't have been a cop in the first place. Now, Mayor, I actually have a question for you related to this. Um, and I've been quiet because I've been wanting to listen to a different perspective from mine Go for about it. it. But my question is, I think part of the problem that we see, and you kind of spoke to it, is that the police see, every, some, some police see everyone as a suspect for their own protection, for the, whatever their reasons are. But on the flip side of that, that means that a lot of people see that the police dehumanize them. And I think that's what helps to breed some of that distrust and mistrust in the, in the in communities, especially in communities of color and poor communities. It's the opposite how, side of the coin. How do we bridge that gap? How do we how do we have a place to where people see each other as human again and help to build that rapport? I think well, I think that the police department is doing a lot of things in that area. They're they're doing more social things. They're hanging out with kids. They're playing ball with kids. They're going to neighborhood meetings. They're working with neighborhoods on a first uh, on a face-to-face -face basis. They're being more engaged with people on a non-threatening level. So, you know, if you're hanging out with a cop and you find out, hey, this isn't a bad guy, it's not, it's not at all what I thought it was, then that changes. And if the police are hanging out with you and they say, ah, she's a great lady, doing some good stuff, I, you know, I, I want to come and spend some time with her, then that changes that. I'm not necessarily talking about that so much. I'm talking about the situations when you have to do be active as a cop, when you have to pull over somebody, when you have to respond to a crime, uh, those types of things. And then there are some people, like I said, that probably shouldn't be cops at all, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, I had a psychologist friend of mine saying that the this, this psycho psychological makeup of a lot of cops is as a sociopath, and, and not in a bad way, but strictly a definitional thing where they have certain aspects or traits of sociopathy. Um, and I get that, and I think it's overly broad, but there are some people who are drawn to the power issue and not necessarily the serve and protect issue. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of police officers. Uh, frankly, I, I have police officers who would, would take a bullet for me, and I respect that. And I know some other officers that I don't want to be around. And I know that there are some of the officers that I'm around that don't want to be around some of those officers too. It's like anything else. Right. I don't care what it is. You're going to have 10% that are not who they're supposed to be. That's the issue. And those are the ones that make it bad for everybody else. But the police department here is trying to do a lot of things to engage in what a lot of people might call community policing. And community policing, in my mind, is simply engaging in the community in a non-threatening, non-hostile, non-enforcement way. And there's a lot of things being done in that area. And it's making a difference. It's making a difference. Um, but we tend to only focus on the negatives. It's the tip of the iceberg, but that's the tip that everybody sees. Can you, um, just because I know we're starting to run out of time, but I want to make sure people know where to go for the upcoming yeah, conversation. Absolutely. I think the next one is at the Gym Theater on um, January 13th. Let me make sure here. I had it right here. January 16th at 5.30 p.m. Uh, where we're going to be talking about systems, institutions, and communities at the Gym Theater. And you do register for this event, although it doesn't cost any money. It doesn't cost any money, but it's nice to register so that we have some sense of how many people are going to show and whether or not we've got enough room. And so far we've had uh, the first one was an overflow event. Uh, Mohart Center last time was full. Yep. And the gym, I hope, will be full as well. 
So come on out and help us talk about it, and uh, and and let's make some progress on this issue. Right. Hey, I've enjoyed.